Welcome everyone. In today's session, we'll be discussing about on an ancient poet, Fallen among American translators by Yasmin Goderitney. Let me begin this representation with a short biography about the author, Yasmin Goderitney, the great Sri Lankan poet. Apart from writing poetry, she has experimented with short stories and she served as a university professor and as an essayist. Her substantial and creative contribution to the field of literature and English, especially post-colonial literature, has given her wide recognition in places like Sri Lanka, Australia, almost throughout Europe and USA. And there are many accolades to add to her name. To name a few, in the year 1990, Yasmin Gunadatne was awarded the Order of Australia, the greatest honor ever received and given in Australia for her services to literature and education. And in the year 2001, she was awarded with Raja Ravu Award in India for her contributions to the literature and culture of South Asian diaspora. Gunaratne was awarded with Sahitiratna Award in Sri Lanka in the year 2008. The prestigious Friends and Fellowship of Sahitya Academy of India was conferred upon Yasmin Gunaratne in the year 2011. The, the poem that today we are discussing on an ancient poet fallen among American translators, Gunaratne intended to expose the politics of language and exploitation of South Asian poets and writers by American translators. And this poem, she severely criticizes the 20th century American attitude of commercialism for everything that they are doing. The poet tries to ridicule the American stating their major target as profit making. They even do not spare arts and literature which satiate our aesthetic need rather than monetary benefits. So the first stanza of the poem, the poet states that 200 years, that is enough for them to create a nation. So the 200 years of history, but with that, they fail to develop the craft, courtesy and shaping of skills. That refers to their inability in the creation of an aesthetic realm through arts and literature. They lack talent. And the next stanza, he talks about the Puritan grimace that they have. And the heart which creates poetry has no fear of death. There is a gaping emptiness that filled under layer on layer of tenuous talent. The condition has become very terrible. And then the poet warns us by stating that there is death in the touch of America. And she yells her cries and asks not to hold cigarette in her people's lips, not to light up their maudlin dreams. She asks American translators to take their hands off, off her people's shoulders. She asks them to delete the names from their computerized trifles and even the leprous fingers off from their poetry. She refers again the American poets like Iliad, Pound, and Trost have become silent now, and she hopes for a better future. The tide of poetry will bring such things that will create, build new images. The poet tries to save something of the past and search with great efforts possible images among shards and rubble. The poet causes America as empty of grace. She calls it a graveyard of art, a monster living on Lassa House. She says the newfound land of poetry in America is long lost. Now there is only commercialized poets. So the real talent of the poet is hidden and has become useless. America is trying to make the people or the writer addicted to cigarettes and wine. The touch of the American translators is, seems like treacherous and it is deadly. By poets, America is building its literary trade market. For them, literature is nothing but a trade. They can give this or that prize to a particular poet and commercialize the sale. They have the computerized list. So simply, they select one name. 
they lack the power or that sense to appreciate the works. The poet here know this literary politics. She calls this as a dreadful trade of gathering samphire. Still, there is a hope of good future. The poet thinks that the tide of poetry will bring new images. The past will be saved by searching the possible images among shards and rubble. The poet has lots of hatred of these American translators. She calls the country as a graveyard of art. The American translators are the monsters living on the Lhasa house. The poet says that newfound land, America is a newfound land. It is long lost in, at least in poetry. There is only a commercial market attitude that had entered the literary field. Thank you.